back to Annie's Art Institute. I'm here this summer in Oregon with my graduate students who are going to learn one of my favorite projects for kids. And the reason it is is that it links language arts and art and it uses our wonderful color mixing. And if you've watched my videos, you know that there are nine videos on my uh, website that help you and your kids learn about color mixing. But today we're using paint chips. And paint chips are just pieces of paper on which we have put very thick tempera paint. So let's get started. This lesson is called Big Idea in a Frame that Fits. And my thought was that we could use art like you use writing, with a main idea and supporting details. <clears throat> so there would be the main idea in the center. It might be the part of a plant. It might be a face. It might be anything that you've been studying or can think of that's the big idea. But then the frame around it has supporting details. The frame fits the big idea. And in this case, I'm going to call it food with a mood on a fancy plate. <laughs> and I know you're going to love it. You can see some of the work back here. This has all been done by third and fifth graders. And it is the most portable, cleanest, most manageable way to paint that I've ever discovered. So I'm going to get started. On the art path, you'll see some photographs I took. Now, it's, I love using real fruits and vegetables, but they are expensive. They're also food, and sometimes using food for art is considered wasteful. It's also a way that we can actually make lots of choices without smelly stuff that rots. <laughs> you know, and onions and all sorts of things all over the desk. So the students, what I want you to do when you get started, or the students do, stick a whole bunch of these on a table. And before anyone gets a chance to draw, they just look at these things, look at them very carefully, like a scientist would. And I, I have a whole set of these. They came from the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And I have 24 of them, so everybody gets to really look inside that and see, it is way more than I knew was there. All the part you throw away is the most interesting part before you eat a yellow pepper. Mm -hmm. There's all kind of seeds in there. It's really wonderful. So I'm going to let the kids just take a look and enjoy it, talk about things. Look at the seeds look like they're growing right out of the center. I have here a, a spaghetti squash, a grapefruit, and I'm usually giving the kids a couple of minutes. Talk about these things, share them, everybody's got one of these. And then when I say, all right, boys and girls, it's time to choose, you choose one of these that you like and you think you'd like to make your main idea on your fancy plate. And I think I'm going to choose the green pepper. Now in this case, this is the very first attempt to try to draw something that I see. And so when I'm drawing this, what I'm going to be showing the kids is I'm going to verbalize what I see. I see one, two, three, four sections. They aren't just a line though. They're thick in there, aren't they? So there's another line in here. It's kind of a hollow, would be called a negative space. And around that, each of those is connected by a little fiber, one, two, three, four, and a, a fibrous place there with all kind of little seeds coming off. So I want to start with a plate, I think. I'm going to make a giant plate. And the students and I enjoy doing what some teacher called a whisper line so that we don't have to throw away a bunch of paper. We just make a very soft line. And when we start to make it, we have a nice shape. And you don't have to have a perfect circle because perfect is boring, isn't it? And then we just take three fingers so we have a nice border for our plate and make another circle inside. And that just shows us the area that I have to put my, my fabulous vegetable in. So now I'm going to start with the vegetable. And I'm only going to be drawing what I can see here. And as I said, I could see one, two, three, four. I want it to fill the plate. If you want to put more than one vegetable or fruit on here, it has to be the same vegetable, but it can be part of one. So for example, I could put one whole one here and a half one there. I think I'm just going to go for the whole one, the main big idea. So I'm thinking, if I really want to size it up here, I could make a dot here for this, and there'd be a, like that. But I'm just going to go freehand, two, three, four. 
And remember I said it had some thickness, and I'm looking here, it has this really wiggly ed edge inside. I'm seeing that, and then there's that fiber. And I'm really looking here, not at all really there. And then the fiber, and again here. I'm really keeping my eye on the thing I'm drawing, because in observation drawing, the idea is to represent what you see. The idea is not to do a photographic, perfect example of it. It's to represent what you see in a way that you can. So even if you're in kindergarten, if you see it goes like this, you can make a line like that. Or if you see it has seeds and they look like that, you can do that. But you don't make marks and scribble and color unless you see it. Okay, so now I really like what I'm getting there. And I'm into that wonderful fiber part. It's this chunky part in the middle. Like this. And I must look again here because these seeds are just wonderful. You just throw these down the sink, you know, or the garbage, or recycle or whatever, and you don't see how beautiful they are. They're wonderful little shapes. And now I'm not looking at every single one because I have the gist. I'm pretty much working off of my memory of seeds that come out of this part. And because I know I love my line, I'm making it nice and dark. We're, work we're working with what's like watercolor, and so you want your paint to stop at the waxy edge of the crayon, so you need to make sure your marks are very dark. And I do like my piece. I love doing this. So do the children. This is a real winner, right? They love this one. We did it with faces. We did it with all kinds of things. And I'm doing the fruit first so that I don't make messes across the border. So I start in the middle and move out. That way my paper will stay cleaner. What do you think? Okay, now, I have drawn something and represented something I see. But now I get to be an inventor. Here's the creative part. I was a scientist observing, representing something that I actually saw, making it nice and big. Now I'm going to decorate the plate in a way that fits. And by fit, it means that you'll use patterns and shapes and colors that will look good with your fruit. And that's a perfectly creative idea. You don't, you're going to make it up. But I, I went around my house just recently, and I thought, well, let me find some patterns I could show the children. This is a little box I got at the Goodwill. And look at the wonderful pattern here. It's got a rectangle with um, zigzags, and it goes orange, yellow-orange, yellow-orange. It has blue, green, red, orange, flower, 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 flower. So you know that anything that repeats or repeats with a pattern would be great on a plate, right? A real decorative plate. I also found some great textiles in the house, another more zigzags and stripes. These from a blanket, just big stripes, and then beautiful leaf shapes, even a butterfly there. And this one. Similar, these are some just really simple patterns that are lines and shapes. And the whole way we're designing in this piece is lines equal shapes. That's the really key to this drawing. It's not sketching, it's not making anything that you can't color in. It's like making your own color book. That's the way that it works beautifully. So give me some ideas. What kind of a pattern or line do you think would be great to start on the, the that would fit my green pepper? By the way, you can make this any color you want to. It could be totally wacky color. I'm not asking the kids at the first time they start mixing with these to make them the perfect color. So we can do any colors we want here. What shapes and patterns do you think would look good? Mm -hmm. Oh, what if I made starbursts and made my plate have edges like that later? Let's see if I could do that. That's going to be fun. So I'm going to go ahead and do my dark line to show the interior of the plate. And I've got some good ideas here. Anything else come up in your mind? You let me know. But remember, every shape has to be something you can color in.
Okay. Hmm. I'm inclined. Something makes me want to do this. And then put some of the contrasting zigzags. And again, if you haven't watched the video and learned to color mix, I'd suggest you back up and do lessons one through five, and then you'll know how to do this. But if you have only three pieces of paper covered with thick tempera paint, I'm using Crayola Artista 2, and this is turquoise or cyan, magenta, and yellow, you still can make all kinds of colors. So sometimes if I only have an hour and students have had no other color mixing, we can actually do it this way. We can play with it out here and mix and then just cut these out later and mount them, which we can do easily. So I'm going to start in the middle again. I'm going to start mixing and I love to try to get a red orange. So I'm going to get some magenta and I'm using a non-slip water container and to touch it with some yellow and go back in and paint. The wonderful thing about this too is that because you have to kind of scrub and with the students using stiff brushes like this, usually I suggest five to seven counts to get the paint off. One, two, three, four, five, a little more of this and go back in and change brushes anytime you need a small brush for a small area. Put some texture on it like that. Not pretty. And the very little mess is the wash up and you can actually go from using a bright color like an orange and back into a blue right like this without much mess. I did some math on this and found that these cost three cents for a whole palette. So imagine you're getting a whole beautiful watercolor painting for the children with three cents and you just toss this and you're done. It's also a great take home project for a mom. Fix the palettes. It does turn out that this was green, isn't it? And so one of the, um, one thing I noticed about working especially with young children is that the drawing goes well and the painting is impatient with some. Some kindergarten children are as meticulous as this or more. Others are painting the whole thing. Yes. Yes. Yes, just like this. And one or two reminders, you know it's like your own coloring book and if you we could, excuse me, you could get lots of different sections of different colors. Why don't you try that? That's fine. But if you look at the Lynch book, you'll see some that are just neutral and they were just having a wonderful time moving the paint around, but they had all the process of looking at the item and drawing it, representing it. You just want to take the paper away before it makes holes in it. So that would be food with a mood.